Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. There's something moving slash frightening about God's power. When we think of God creating and speaking and whole galaxies coming out of his mouth, it is awe-inspiring, as it should be. But I want us today as we continue our series that we call Proper Theology, as we look at the uh, person and attributes of the living God, I want us to, in a manner of speaking, go a little small. That I, I want us to recognize and affirm and rejoice over and be touched by the glorious truth That God not only makes mountains, but he makes molehills. He not only throws galaxies, but he sculpts snowflakes. I want us to understand that God is not only the creator, but that God is in his essence deeply and profoundly and immutably and perfectly creative. He is more. He is pleroma, a fullness, a cornucopia, an overflowing of creating. Again, I think snow is a perfect example. He didn't have to do it that way. He didn't have to make each individual snowflake different from every other one. But he did. Why? Because that's who he is. That's what he does. You know, when you go outside today and you look at the leaves and you look at the variety of colors and you look at the variety of the shapes, not just the original shapes, but as those leaves are drying up, preparing to fall onto the ground, he, he shapes them. When those leaves disconnect from the tree, And a gentle breeze blows, and that leaf makes its descent upon the ground. That's God orchestrating a dance. When that leaf slowly but steadily breaks down, and becomes covering for the ground and food for the soil. This is still God leading the dance. And when spring comes and the new leaves come and the sun feeds the photosynthesis, this is all God at work. Do you ever Notice the sheer extravagance of the universe. Do you ever look at a, I don't know, one of those uh, uh, penguins with the really bright uh, little feathers on their heads that look kind of silly? 
or a duck-billed platypus or a hippopotamus. Did you ever just look at these things and think, oh, my stars. Look at what God did. He, he's like, well, I shouldn't put it that way. And he has a, what's the word for it? He has a streak of whimsy in him. A Seussian, like Dr. Seuss, element. That's where platypi come from. The God we serve is creative. And by the way, it's not just the stuff, but the stories. The story of your life, the story of my life. Think about, I mean, I th think you should think about it in your context. I think about it in mine, but the fact that I'm married to Lisa. Who would have thought it? Who would have predicted this? The fact that Lisa's married to me, who would have thought that or predicted that? It's all of it his doing. He wrote the whole of the story. And he does it for a simple, straightforward reason, to manifest his glory. This is the God we serve, the God of more, the God of and, the God of plus, the immeasurable God whose immeasurableness is poured out into all that he has made. Mercy. If you're a regular listener to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, then you will remember not long ago we debuted a new series that we call Sacred Marriage. This is a segment with Lisa and I together talking about the sacredness of marriage. And if you heard that uh, first segment, one of the key things that we want to emphasize in that segment moving forward is the significance and importance of openness and honesty and vulnerability. We talked about how uh, when we cover up, when we hide, uh, we're, we're making it more difficult for us to be changed. And not only that, but we make it more difficult for us to uh, be loved. Uh, because even if we are approved of when we're putting on a mask, then it's the mask that's approved of rather than we ourselves. Well, that core value of honesty and openness is something that means a lot to all that we do here at Jesus Changes Everything and Dunamis Fellowship. It's our uh, contention that one of the great weaknesses inside the church uh, is our propensity to uh, present ourselves as so much better than we are. We show up to church on Sunday looking like the very healthy, solid family, and we're not. Uh, we present our ministry as strong and, and successful. Everything's all about image. It's not just uh, the church or Christians that do this, of course. There's a very real sense in which social media exists for this purpose. It has the wide acceptance that it has because it's an opportunity for each of us to put our best foot forward, to present ourselves as something other than what we really are. Well, I mention all that today because uh, this particular segment is our weekly segment wherein we uh, seek partners and supporters for our ministry. And I'm thinking uh, that, A, I'm not very good at this. I don't need to act like this is some sort of uh, revealing of a secret. You all know that I'm not very good at this. Uh, it's not news to anybody. But 
not only am I not good at this, but B, I need to do better. And uh, I need to have a level of, level of honesty that acknowledges uh, that we're not in a good place financially. We're not in a good place at all. We've been doing this podcast now for uh, a year and a half. Uh, a Dunamis Fellowship has existed for a year and a half. Uh, through this time, as you know, we've been putting out a daily podcast. Uh, we've added the daily uh, Ask RCs. We've had daily pod, uh, blog pieces. We have weekly Bible study, all the things that are going on. And thus far, uh, the income that has come from donations, which is very much appreciated, uh, for which we're very grateful, uh, but that income has not been sufficient that we have been able even to draw any kind of salary, uh, as is the case with most organizations and especially for most startups, uh, labor is one of the highest, uh, expenses. And so far, as I said, we've not drawn any salary whatsoever. Uh, we have been barely surviving on the very limited income that I'm able to bring in uh, as an adjunct professor at a local community college, which I also see as ministry, uh, and the work that I'm able to secure as a uh, editor, writing coach, which I also see as ministry. But it's not enough by any stretch uh, to support a family. And so we're looking for uh, those of you who not only appreciate the things that we're able to do uh, and produce, but who appreciate our desire to be open and honest, to not uh, uh, project some kind of image. So here's me, just me, telling you it's tough and we are behind uh, the eight ball as an organization financially and we need support now i've said it before i still believe it i still mean it that's this if you're listening and being blessed by this podcast and you a can't afford to help support us financially or b don't even want to but could please keep listening because we're not here as an organization committed to raising money we're here as an organization committed uh, to affirming and demonstrating and instructing people on the glorious truth that Jesus does change everything. And if that's uh, helpful to you, we want to keep doing it. I'm speaking to those who not only want to help us, but want to help those who are helped by us. That's what we're looking for. When we talk about ministry partners, we're not talking about uh, merely people who want to support or write checks. We're talking about partners who are going to come alongside of us and do help us do this work of building up the saints, of encouraging them, our work on our Ask RCs, of trying to reach out to the lost and answer their difficult questions uh, and present to them the glorious truths of the gospel. So that's where we are. That's what we're doing. And we are still very much in need of uh, donations, donors, weekly, or excuse me, monthly donors. As always, it's very simple. Uh, you just go to rcsprolljr.com and there's a donate button that'll walk you through the process. Whether it's a one-time gift or a monthly gift, all donations are tax deductible as we are a 501c3. I appreciate you listening to me. I appreciate you listening to the podcast and I pray that God would bless you and yours. One of the things that I have come back to, one of the questions that keeps haunting me as we go through this bizarre season that we call COVID-19 is what are we going to learn that we can do without? When either the state or the exigencies of the reality, I'm not taking a side on that question, when one of these puts us in a situation where uh, we can't do what we're used to doing, well, when we find out we don't need to keep doing it. You know, I remember uh, 
some years ago, this is how long ago it was, uh, before the internet, before emails were forwarded, it wasn't unusual for things to go, quote, viral via fax machines, where people would just spread information throughout the world uh, to different fax machines. I was working at a bank, and I came across our fax machine, a uh, one-page sheet describing the health benefits of drinking eight glasses of water a day. Well, I read through that, and I was persuaded, and I began to try it, and for two weeks I choked down my eight glasses of water. And on day 15, I woke up thirsty, wanting water. I tried a soda, and I found the taste, well, distasteful. I had discovered that what I thought I was enjoying, I wasn't really enjoying, and when doing without it made me happier. Well, what are we going to find goes in that category at the end of COVID? Uh, one of the things I think we're already experiencing is uh, a significant drop in the number of people attending church, people who are uh, content to uh, continue to, if at all, attend church over the Internet. This whole gathering together thing seems unimportant to some people. I think that's a, a terrible, terrible thought. Uh, I know for me so far this season, uh, maybe just because I was afraid of getting nothing, uh, the absence of fans in the stands while I'm watching the game on TV has not had a significant impact. Uh, that said, one of the things I'm wondering about is fall festivals. See, when I was growing up, we had two fall festivals. Uh, one in the town of Stallstown. Every uh, fall, usually in September, we had what was called the Flax Scutcheon. Over at the fairgrounds, uh, they were sort of an old-fashioned days kind of event where uh, the Cub Scouts would make uh, apple cider with an old-fashioned apple cider press. Uh, the Methodist Church would make breakfast of uh, hot cakes and sausage in an old-fashioned style, and it's called the flax scutching because uh, there were people who would make uh, clothes out of flax the old-fashioned way, and there would be a, an Indian raid and those kinds of things. Well, about a month later, maybe three weeks later, in the town of Ligonier, which was just uh, another f 10 miles down the road, uh, they had Fort Ligonier days. And I've mentioned uh, Fort Ligonier Days in the past and what it meant to me. And this was a huge deal, is a huge deal. Right? It's a town of maybe 2,000 people. And every Fort Ligonier Day weekend, they welcome on the Saturday probably uh, 100,000 people. Well, that's typically happening right about now. But it's not going to happen. It's just not. And I've, I thought, one, about all the businesses. You know, most businesses have their Black Friday. That day when their business for the year turns into the Black, the Friday after Thanksgiving. For a lot of businesses, uh, small uh, family-owned businesses in Ligonier, Pennsylvania, it's this weekend uh, that pushes them over the top. Uh, if they miss it, then I don't know. They're, they're going to miss it. But my question is, Will the people, those 100,000 that attend every year, will they miss it? How much will they miss it? We have events like that here. We have uh, uh, old-fashioned days, Founders Days, over in Leo Grable uh, area, which is a, a, a what do you call, um, an Amish kind of stronghold. And then we have Johnny Appleseed Days here in Fort Wayne, uh, one of the places that Johnny Appleseed passed through. And... You know, I've looked forward to those events, mostly because I like fair food, um, but I haven't suffered unduly not being able to go. So I wonder what we're going to miss. I wonder what traditions that may go back decades or centuries, what traditions will simply die for being broken this time. I hope that's not the case, because one of the blessings of these festivals beyond the fair food is the remembrance of the past, the connection to our forefathers. 
Well, I'm going to come back to this, God willing, if I remember next fall. And I'm going to encourage you, assuming that we've come out the other side of this, to make the effort to go and participate uh, in your local festivals, whether it's a, a pumpkin fair or a uh, apple celebration, whatever the event is where you are. Uh, trust God in missing it. Don't have a meltdown if you're not having it because of COVID, but don't give up and don't forget the blessings that these events offer. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe, which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcsproljr.com. And join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.